Hi everyone, I'm Elisa Frigols Brines, Assistant Professor of Criminal Law at the Criminal Law Department, Universitat de Valencia, and the topic of this video is existence and temporal applicability of norms in Spanish criminal law. Normative change is a recurring feature of any legal system, and the Spanish legal system is no exception. Our legal systems are designed for change, and they use specific rules for that. These rules, as we will see, are slightly different in criminal law, but the foundations of the rules for change are the same for the whole legal system. Finally, it is necessary to stress the importance of checking the temporal applicable norm when applying criminal law. This is something that has been recently brought to the attention of the general public due to the Law Reform on Sexual Offenses of 2022, also known as Ley del Solo CSC. But it is something that a lawyer should never forget to evaluate before legally classifying any criminal deed. The basic notions related to the temporal application of norms are basically two, existence and temporal applicability. A criminal law exists as soon as the legal procedures necessary for its adoption are carried out that in our legal system involve the process of its approval by parliament as an organic law, its royal, royal sanction and promulgation, and its subsequent publication in the official state gazette, so-called BOE. With this process, the legal provision from which the norm is extracted becomes part of the legal system. Therefore, there are three key moments in this process. Adoption by the parliament, royal sanction and promulgation, and publication. Only the first one could be used as coherent criterion for derogation by incompatibility being the most relevant as it expresses the people's will. Norms are created through interpretation. Thus, it is essential to distinguish between normative provisions, the linguistic expressions that make up normative texts, and norms, the meaning extracted from those linguistic expressions. This distinction is crucial, as it means that normative change do does not always occur through formal rulemaking procedures, but can also occur through interpretation. What we apply are norms, not normative provisions, and therefore it is always necessary to consider this, this problem. Sorry. The existence of a norm does not make it applicable from that moment on. For it to be applicable, it must enter into force, according to Article 2.1 of the Civil Code. The period of time that exists between the moment when the rule is published in the official gazette and the moment when it comes into force, either in accordance with the provisions of the legal provision itself or in accordance with, with the subsidiary provision established in Article 2.1 of the Civil Code, is called vacatio legis a temporary interval that finds its meaning in the possibility of citizens being aware of the rule prior to its entry into force, which allows them to adapt their conduct to the new rules that will be applicable in the future. Once a rule enters into force, applicability is determined by linking a specific action, a property of a rule, which could be, for example, the action of killing in the crime of homicide, to the enforced period of a rule by means of a point of connection, which in the case of criminal law is the moment of commission of the criminal deed. From the different questions examined, it is possible to distinguish between internal and external applicability of norms. Internal applicability of norms uh, is based in the properties of the norm, agents, actions, circumstances of the norm, that are used as criteria of internal application. For example, if a certain norm states that the active agent should be a civil servant, this is a criterion of internal application because it is applicable to all civil servants. Sometimes, this criteria of internal application could be used as criteria of temporal application or connection points when the statutes do not provide the specific connection points. For example, how do we know which st statute should be of application to a cert certain rental contract signed on a date X? If the statute does not provide any specific connection point, the closing of the contract during the enforced period of a specific statute will determine that the provisions of this statute should be applied to that contract. This is an example of internal criteria of application being used as temporal criteria of application. Regarding external applicability, it defines the period when a certain norm must be temporally applied, and we can find different types of provisions ruling temporal application. First, the enforced period, 
that starts when the norm comes into force after the, the publication and the vacatio legis and finishes with its derogation. According to Article 91 of the Spanish Constitution and Article 2.1 of the Civil Code, once a, st a statute has been approved by the Parliament, duly sanctioned and promulgated, it has to be published in the official gazette and go through the period of the vacatio legis and then comes into force. Derogation is the end of the enforced period of the statute or norm, but it does not affect the existence of the norm. The norm continues to exist in the legal system, even if it's not ordinarily applied, except if there is a special disposition requiring to do so. The only way of avoiding completely the future application of a norm is to expel it from the legal system by declaring it void. For example, by the Constitutional Court in the case of non-statutory and in the case of non-statutory provisions by court or judges. There are two types of derogation. Express derogation by designation in the posterior statute or by the running of the time limit of a temporal law and derogation by incompatibility or contradiction. This latter form affects only norms as a result of interpretation and not statutes. Other criteria of uh, external applicability could be found in the legal system. There would be at least four kinds of applicability criteria which are distinguished by the level of reference. First, the provision establishing temporal points of connection that are those provisions which help to establish what should be the point of connection for the determination of the applicable law. Like, for example, those establishing as connection point the moment of the commission of the offense that we can find in Article 1, 2, and 7 of the Criminal Code. Also, we have applicability provisions. They are characterized by determining the applicability of legal rules in a given branch of the law by means of their compliance with a pre-established criterion. For example, this is the case of Articles 1 and 2 of the Criminal Code. They could be thought as of, sorry, as implying a higher level of reference as, in order to be followed, they require the establishment of connection points. Then we have the transitional provisions. These are the most abundant and best known of the applicability criteria and effectively presuppose, in the case of provisions of all levels, a higher level of reference. This means that in case of conflict between the applicability provisions and the transitional provisions, the conflict must be clearly resolved in favor of the later. The most important difference uh, between the applicability provisions and the transitional provisions lies precisely in the ad hoc nature of the latter, and in the fact that the latter sometimes do not merely state which rule is applicable, but provide the rule to be applied. In these cases, a distinction must be made between the applicability criterion itself and the rule of conduct which com accompanies it. Like, for example, what happens with the trans transitional provisions of the Organic Act 1, 2015 of a law reform of the Criminal Code. We have also the principles of temporal application of the law. These would be provisions of general application to all the legal rules of a legal system or to all the legal rules of a given branch of the legal system, laying down certain guidelines for the temporal application of legal rules. Their nature as principles means that they are of a very general nature, uh, for example, their properties are not strictly defined, and they are often included in constitutions. The application of a norm to acts committed prior to its enforced period will be defined as a retroactive application of the norm. And the provision of retroactivity is what prevents such application when the norm is unfavorable to the active agent of the offense. A retroactive application of a norm could also happen through a change in case law. These normative changes, as long as it is clear that they have occurred and the moment when they have taken place, must, must also be subject to the prohibition of retroactivity of unfavorable uh, criminal rules. The constitutional prohibition of retroactivity is a constitutional norm located in Article 25, Section 1 of the Spanish Constitution, stating that no conduct should be considered as an offense or punished by a specific penalty or security measure if a norm has not been enacted and come into force before the offense has been committed. It has an indisputed, uh, a disputed scope of application. Its undisputed scope of application encompasses the legal definition of the offenses or any element of those offenses, the punishments awarded to them, and the applicable security measures. Its disputed scope of application consists of procedural criminal laws, 
criminal enforcement regulation, execution of penalties and security measures, even if it's an area recognized already by the European Court of Human Rights, see for example the judgment uh, Rio Prada versus Spain of 21 of October 2013, and also re retroactive change through interpretation. That it is also, uh, for example, in the case of case law, that this is also recognized by the European Court of Human Rights in the prior judgment mentioned. Besides the constitutional prohibition of retroactivity, there is also the retroactive application of the more lenient law. There has been a lot of debate on this principle of temporal applicability as a result of the enactment of the law reform of sexual offenses of 2022. But this debate has not considered neither its rational nor its nature as a fundamental right. The rationale of this principle is based on proportionality and the prohibition of excess. However, this is not sufficient to explain why, if the rule was considered proportionate at the time the, uh, the act was committed, it is no longer proportionate uh, afterwards. The point is that proportionality should not be considered statically, but dynamically. The reason to apply a dynamic approach is provided by the preventive aim of criminal law. Within proportionality, the principle of necessity and proportionality in the strict sense are the elements that justify the application of the most favorable norm, because the application of the earlier rule, which contains a higher penalty than the wrongfulness of the conduct in question, implies not only an unnecessary waste of criminal coercion, but also a disproportionate use of jus puniendi. Regarding its nature as a fundamental right, to this day, the Constitutional Court has denied its nature as a constitutional right, thus questioning that this could be actionable using an appeal before the Constitutional Court. Nonetheless, it has been recognized as a human right in international instruments like Article 15, Section 1 of the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights, Article 49, Section 1 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union, and also by the European Court of Human Rights as part of Article 7 of the European Convention in the judgment of 17 September 2009, case of Scopola versus Italy. Therefore, according to Article 10.2 of the Spanish Constitution, it should be considered this way, as a uh, fundamental right by the Constitutional Court. Uh, regarding the application of the more lenient uh, of favorable criminal law, as previously stated, the Criminal Code has immanent meta criteria of temporal application that we could find in Article 1, 2, and 7 of the Criminal Code, and the specific rule for the application of the most favorable rule to the defendant in Article 2, Section 2 of the Criminal Code. But transitional disposition are special norms, and therefore, if they exist, should be applied instead of this meta disposition. This is important because the scope of application of Article 2, Section 2 of the Criminal Code, according to its wording, is quite more generous than the usual transitional provisions, as it provides for the application of the more favorable law, even if the active agent is already serving its sentence. It is also important to state that according to Article 2, Section 2 of the Criminal Code, the most favorable law should be applicable as of the moment of the commission of the offense until the sentence is fully served, being the most favorable case that of the depenalization of conduct or even the introduction of any cause of exclusion of punishment, like, for example, the statutory limitations. If the offense persists and only the punishment changes, then the punishment should be compared. There is agreement that prison sentences, and specifically life sentence, are the most severe punishments, followed by disqualifications and deprivation of rights and finishing with fines. When assessing the most favorable regulation, the complete norms of the criminal codes in force at the relevant moment should be compared, because there is a prohibition of the so-called exterior as a corollary of the principle of legality. In any case, the defendant must be heard on the assessment of the mildest disposition. There is finally an exception to the application of the most favorable law. This, is, this exception is temporal laws. No definition of temporal law is provided, so there is doubt about its scope of application. We don't know exactly if they only include temporary law ab initio, like, for example, the Royal Decree of Alarm State in Spain, the incidental temporal laws, exceptional laws, blind criminal laws with complementary temporal rules, so there is a doubt about that. There are other problems related to the temporal application of criminal norms, like those of crimes whose commission is prolonged in time, the change of the blank disposition in blank criminal laws, 
or the results of judgments of the Constitutional Court, basically the declaration of voidness of legal provisions and norms by the Constitutional Court. All of them will be treated in detail in future videos. Thank you.